Hey guys, this is Bella and today I'll be taking you through how to set up your Notion for school. If you're new to my channel, I'm a student at Harvard studying neuroscience and I make vlogs and videos on productivity and learning. In this video, I'll be going over how you can set up your own Notion page from scratch and hopefully help you stay afloat for the upcoming school year. This video is in partnership with Notion, which is really cool given that I've been a Notion user for the past few years and it's a tool I use on a daily basis. I did make some Notion tour videos previously and a lot of you shared that it might be nice to know how exactly to build it from start to finish, so I'll be showing you that today. If you want to watch my other Notion videos, I'll link them below in the description box. Without further ado, let's get started. When you first open Notion, you get an empty page with a bunch of options. Something you could consider starting with is a checklist. To make one, you can click on this plus button and find the to-do list. You can also create a box by clicking on call out and insert your checkboxes in there. I like to have multiple categories of to-do lists, the first being a personal category for all the daily tasks I need to do for myself, like laundry and groceries. I'm also going to add a school category by duplicating the first one for all of my upcoming assignments and deadlines, as well as a third one, a career category for all things related to internships and career planning. I like to have all of those side by side to save space and visualize them all at once, which you can do simply by dragging. You can make each bucket a different color or format by clicking on the six dots on the left hand side and going to color. Another thing you could do is assign icons or emojis to represent each bucket to add some flavor to your page. Below our checklists, let's try making a weekly schedule. To create a new section, we can add a divider by clicking on the plus button and below that, we can add a new heading. You can always change the type or the color of the text by clicking on the six dots on the left. What I like to do is make a section for each day of the week. We have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to start with. I format them into nice little headings, change their color, and drag them into a side-by-side -side format so that I can see everything at once. Just like before, I can make checkboxes using the to-do list feature and drag them under each day of the week. Once we're happy with how that looks, we can finish up the schedule by duplicating what we already have and filling out the rest of the days. Now we have the complete basic structure of our homepage. To format this entire page, we click on the three dots on the upper right corner and from there we can change our font, text size, and the width of the page. I personally like to have mine set to full width so that I have more space for content. In terms of customization, there's so much you could do on Notion. If you like wallpapers as much as me, you can change the cover by hovering at the top of the page and clicking on Add Cover. You can choose an image from Notion's own gallery or upload your own image. I love picking out themes and icons for each of my pages and giving them a makeover once in a while, so having this option to decorate is really, really nice. One tip I can share um, about customization is making a Pinterest page or a folder on your device of all the images you like and might potentially add to your pages. When you want to add them in, you can directly copy and paste the link of the image or upload the file which can save a lot of time than looking for an image each time. For instance, if I want to add an image here, I can just go to where I save all my images like Pinterest and copy the link to the image. Then I can simply paste this onto the page and select create embed. And now the image pops up for me to drag and place wherever or change the size. Optionally, you can also insert widgets like a mini calendar or a weather block. 
Most widgets you can find from external websites like Indify. Let's go to Indify now and I can show you how to create one. Once you're on the website, you will see different options like quotes, progress bar, weather, and countdown. Let's say we want to make a weather block. We can click on that option. And then from here, we can choose um, our text, our location, the color. Um, and once we have the widget that we like, we can simply copy the link and then paste it on the page where we want it. Just like inserting an image, we can select create embed and then the widget should now be nicely placed on your page. For the start of each semester, I like to create an overview of my classes on a separate page. I first list out all the classes I'll be taking. And then I click on the six dots and turn it into a page of its own. This is what I find really useful about Notion since you can keep creating pages within pages to organize them. On this new subpage, I can write down everything I have to know for this class, such as the full title of the course, the professor, required readings, and major deadlines. For me, all the classes have a different grading system, so I make sure to add in information about how the class is graded, such as what the cutoff for each letter grade is, what the breakdown looks like, and if there is any extra credit opportunities. This overview is really nice to have because I can come back to it at any point during the year to check different information about the class without having to reread the syllabus each time. And those syllabuses sometimes can get really long, like 10 to 20 pages. Something that makes Notion an extremely powerful tool is its database feature. A database is a collection of information that can be organized into different formats. Let's make a database by again clicking on the plus button and scrolling down to database. I find the table format the easiest to work with because it kind of looks like a spreadsheet or Excel. So let's click on that. And from there, we can say add new database. We now have something that looks really familiar like an Excel sheet. As an example, I'll format this into a list of assignments and deadlines. Let's give this a title and what course it's for. You can change a column setting by clicking on the header and going to edit property. From here, you can change the type of information such as to text, number, date, and multiple choice. Let's go with select here since we want to select a course for each assignment. When we go back, we can then add options by directly typing in the name of the course. Let's say math and English. Another column to add is the deadline. Start by clicking on the plus button on the header and select date as the type. Now we can select when the assignment is due by clicking on the calendar. You can repeat this process to create more columns like a text description of the assignment or a status update to keep track of where you are. Once you type in things like assignments and exams into this table, this database can be automatically be configured into a calendar, list, gallery, and so on by clicking on this plus button at the top. You can toggle between different modes to visualize the same information in different ways. Databases come in super handy when you're creating a schedule, budget tracker, and anything you want to keep track of in general. As an example, we can also create a list of books that we've read and make a database of book reviews. There's a lot of directions you could take this, and it's a really versatile tool that I think is very good to know. The next page I'm going to create is actually something relatively new to Notion, and that is Notion AI. I'm going to call this page AI Wisdom and give it this crystal ball emoji. You can activate it by pressing the space bar and giving it any prompts or tasks to do, like fixing your spelling and grammar, brainstorming ideas, and drafting a piece of writing. 
A few months ago, I was interviewing for internship positions, and something that helped tremendously was this feature. What I did was ask the AI to come up with a list of interview questions. Let's say I'm interviewing for a biotech startup that focuses on neuroscience and AI. I can specify details about the position, like what kind of project I'll be working on and what kind of company it is, and then the AI can tailor questions for me. This can save a lot of time when you prepare because it compiles a bunch of results from the internet to give you specific things you need. To practice for the interview, I first try to answer the questions on my own, and then I can also look at the sample answers and update my own answers. Another really cool use for Notion AI is for meal plans or grocery lists. So that's just another idea for making use of this really cool feature on Notion. Okay. So I added a few more things to this template that might come in handy, like a budget tracker and a reading list using the database feature, as well as a random brainstorm page. This brainstorm page is just an empty space where you can note down any interesting ideas, observations, or even weird dreams you've had. These are some starting points you could implement in your own setup, but feel free to come up with your own pages using the elements and strategies we talked about. Now that we have more pages, we might consider making a navigation bar. This is a list of all the pages that we can add to the homepage so that we can quickly navigate to each. We can first type in navigation bar and under this, we can just drag each page from the left-hand panel to create a nice little menu. Once again, we can change the format of the heading to fit the rest of the theme and wrap that up nicely. Instead of doing this from scratch like I just showed you, another option is to use a pre-existing template. To use a template, we can start a new page and we can click on the template option and browse through different pages that we could start from. This could be a really simple one that we can use as a skeleton and build on top. But if you want to see more detailed templates with a specific aesthetic or structure, you can also go to the gallery and look through the ones that other users have created. It can be overwhelming at first to try and create everything on your own, so templates can be a really helpful tool to get you started. I'll be linking the free templates that I have created in the description box, so feel free to check them out and use them for your own setup. My templates are mostly geared toward college students, but you can definitely customize them and use them in any way you'd like. So that about wraps it up for this video. I hope this content was helpful and please leave in the comments if you guys have any questions or anything else you'd like to see relating to Notion. Thank you so much for watching and also thank you to Notion for sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.